Hello, MCU fans. Today, we're going to look at how Wong works his magic to save the Disney Plus timeline. Well, at least his portion of the timeline. I mean, we can't expect him to do everything, I guess. But yeah, Wong's appearance in Episode 3 of She-Hulk goes a long way to solve some of the timeline confusion that was brought up you know, way back when Shang-Chi was released, but even more so when She-Hulk's Episode 1 and 2 were released. So I, I, there will, I guess, be some mild spoilers for me to be able to discuss Wong's appearance. Uh, so if you haven't seen Episode 3 of She-Hulk, I would say go ahead and watch it. Uh, and then, assuming you have, then we will dive right into how Wong works his magic to save at least his part of the Disney Plus timeline. Now, one of the biggest confusing things that came out of Episode 2 is that it certainly made it appear like the cage fight between Wong and Abomination just recently happened. Granted, the episode didn't say that, but whenever a video is released uh, to the media and goes viral, you kind of assume it's pretty recent, right? It's natural to assume that. In fact, I saw lots of videos and uh, website articles trying to figure out how can this have happened simultaneously. And then, thank goodness, Wong shows up in episode three and resolves for certain they are not simultaneous. I had theorized in my episode two video that there was going to be a gap in time between when the cage fight happened and when it was released to the public. Or at least I was certainly hoping that was the case because otherwise the Disney Plus timeline would not work at all. Thank goodness Wong does show up and solves that, which we're going to get to that in just a second. But before so, I do want to point out something interesting. We still don't know at the end of the episode who filmed this cage fight, who's the one that actually released it to the public, and why it was released. Now, we can guess the why is that somebody was trying to keep Blonsky in prison. I mean, by releasing this video to the media, it almost wrecked his parole hearing. But still, uh, then it raises the question, well, why did they want to keep him in prison? So very, very interesting. I'm guessing there is a big bad behind the scenes who is trying to manipulate several events going on, and that I hope <laughs> by the end of the series we'll learn who that is. Uh, but yeah, somebody either bought this video or, or originally filmed it, but somehow got a hold of it. And the timing is very suspicious on why, uh, why and when it was released. So anyway, let's move on though to the big point that I want to get into, which is Wong firmly places She-Hulk after Spider-Man No Way Home. And I say that because when Wong and Jen are talking about how to deal with, you know, the Blonsky situation, since he didn't break out of jail on his own, Wong got him out. You know, how do they solve that? Well, Wong says, I'm not erasing everyone's memories. Not again. It's very messy, believe me. That is obviously a very clear reference to the memory erasing spells in No Way Home. Of course, the first one was a botched spell, and then the second one at the end of the movie fixed it, but had its ramifications and was very messy. Now, the only interesting thing is, you know, why did Wong say, I'm not doing it when Wong wasn't the one that cast the spell? But my guess is he's doing, you know, what a good leader should do. He's the Sorcerer Supreme. He's taking responsibility for this. I mean, he could have thrown Doctor Strange under the bus, but why, right? A good leader just shows up and says, you know, I I'm responsible ultimately. So that aside, this is very significant because it firmly places She-Hulk after the events of No Way Home. So let's look once again at Disney Plus's monthly breakdown of Phase 4. I, I, I totally understand this is not the, the fan breakdown that several of these um, movies and TV shows fans place in different places, but this again is where Disney Plus has placed them. So let's look at some of the significant uh, TV shows and movies to this discussion. Uh, the first one is, is Endgame. You know, Endgame is October 2023. That's really important. The next one is Far From Home, which is June to July of 2024, and we do know where Disney Plus places it, because while it's not in the United States yet on Disney Plus, it is in certain locales such as Japan, and this is where Disney Plus has placed it, and it's actually very important because it also helps us place Shang-Chi in Disney Plus's mind, at least. So we have Far From Home, then we have No Way Home. Now, No Way Home is an interesting movie. It, it goes from July all the way to December of 2024. So technically speaking, it encompasses the next three movies. In other words, Shang-Chi, Eternals, and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, based on Disney Plus's timeline, all happen inside the runtime of uh, No Way Home. That's pretty wild, huh? But anyway, so we have No Way Home. 
Uh, then, then that places Shang-Chi sometime after the start of, of No Way Home, and other things in the movie do kind of imply a late July time frame. Um, then Eternals, we know, is a, a late fall movie. Uh, and Eternals is mentioned in uh, She-Hulk episode two, you remember, uh, about the giant statue reaching out of the ocean. So we know She-Hulk is assumed to be after Eternals. And then, of course, there's She-Hulk uh, placed in 2025 between Moon Knight and Miss Marvel. Um, that can be really anywhere between probably late April to mid-September, early September of 2025. I'm placing it in May because I'm trying to get it as close to Shang-Chi as possible. I mean, obviously, it's there's a quite a gap there, right? I mean, if the video was filmed in July of 2024 and released in May of 2025, I mean, that is almost a year between. So that's why I say somebody intentionally released that video to try to get Blonsky in trouble. But again, this is Disney Plus's timeline, and thanks to Wong's statement of placing She-Hulk after No Way Home, everything works. I mean, had, Sean, had, had uh, Wong showed up and said something like, oh yeah, we did that cage fight the other day, you know, ouch, that would have messed everything up. But nope, he works his magic, saves the timeline for now. Uh, I'm sure other things will might break it, but uh, for now, it is it is intact. And in fact, we can then really flesh out some of these things that have happened in um, uh, She-Hulk and Shang-Chi. Of course, the Hulk's injury of his arm was in October 2023. The cage fight, according to Disney+, Plus, is July of 2024. Then at some point before the end credit scene, Banner started using that inhibitor to uh, turn himself back to human and to slowly heal his arm. There's a throwaway line in episode one of She-Hulk that says his arm slowly started to heal. Um, then, of course, there's the accident, uh, which, assuming She-Hulk is in May, then the flashback, which is the most of episode one, would have been a few months before, so we'll just say February. Uh, notice he's still wearing the inhibitor at that point. Uh, of course, they get in the accident, he gets Jen's blood transfusion, and that heals his arm immediately, uh, and he turns back into Smart Hulk. And then finally, in May of 2025, uh, assuming that's when She-Hulk is, we get the release of the video. So, yeah, boy, thank and of course, Wong shows up to, to establish that. So thank goodness, Wong, for, uh, for keeping things in order, at least as Disney Plus thinks it is. And, and again, Wong's outfit chronology now can be firmly established. You know, he had the, the monk-like attire in Shang-Chi and then in No Way Home. Then by the time of Multiverse of Madness, he has what I like to refer to as his superhero outfit. And then that is the same outfit that he shows up in She-Hulk. So that all makes sense. So She-Hulk definitely happens after No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness. So one interesting point, though, is I don't think we've seen the last of Wong. I think he's coming back because his legal troubles now just begin. He may have gotten Blonsky off the hook, but he basically admitted to a felony, which is breaking someone out of prison. So he may have jumped in the portal to get out of there quickly, but yeah, he, he, he has, he's in trouble. And so he'll come back and maybe we'll get even more information about uh, everything. But so for now, at least, though, he has kept the timeline intact. So the next big uh, cameo to wait for will be Daredevil. Uh, the reason I'm really excited about Daredevil is Daredevil will hopefully give us more of a hint of you know, how much Daredevil is tying back to the Netflix series, in particular season three, where, where things ended off. Uh, I'm hearing rumors we'll at least get some, some, some firm hints. We'll see. Um, so anyway, really excited about his cameo. So if you don't mind, uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's more videos you can check out. And then let's all continue to enjoy the ever-changing, ever-growing Marvel Cinematic Universe.